<clears throat> My name is Luca Centrione, I'm a physical oceanographer from Scripps, and we work primarily with drifting buoys. Uh, and uh, so we have a global program called the Global Lifter Program, and what you see right here is a map of actual data collected with drifting buoys through the years. So a lot of data uh, we collect, and uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to uh, kind of present an overview of what we did in the past few years, starting with uh, ACIRI through NASCAR and MISOBOB, and uh, so a little summary of what the main results are, and a few words about the coming plans for, for MISOBOB this year. And a lot of this work has been done by Verena, which is my collaborator of Scripps. Now, um, why do we do drifting buoys? And uh, this is kind of a summary of the big picture of why drifter data are important. And by drifter, I spend a few words about what the drifter is because it's not clear to everybody how the technology works. Sometimes people ask me how often do they come up to the surface. It's not Argo, it's drifting buoys, surface stuff, okay? Um, but so the, there are three main big areas uh, where we have a big impact. The first one is SST in C2 measurements, which reflects into calibration and validation of satellite products. So the drifters are provided the baseline of observations through which satellite observations are calibrated and validated, mainly validated, not calibrated. Second big area is numerical weather prediction. So many drifters have barometers installed <coughs> and um, the availability of data in real time through the global telecommunication system makes sure that the data are ingested into models and they have a large, large positive impact on uh, numerical weather prediction and making sure the error is small. Um, and then ocean currents, okay? Uh, ocean currents is 13, uh, which is not much of a concern beyond oceanography, but it's very important to many of us. Um, all right, so, um, Drifters look like that. Imagine a surface buoy with a microcomputer inside and sensors, so a thermometer to measure temperature, and sometimes it's not shown here, but a barometer to measure atmospheric pressure. And uh, in, for Aziri, we had uh, salinity sensors installed too, because one of the goals was to look at the variability or the, um, you know, spatial and temporal availability of sea surface salinity. So starting with Aziri, we deployed 36 drifters that we manufacture as scripts, and uh, this is the main region where the deployment occurred. This is a um, like a large vision of the deployment configuration. And um, so those data were used to essentially look at the um, kind of Correlation of the sea surface salinity. And, uh, you know, we discover what other people observe in the field that, you know, special, the correlation scale is very small, a few kilometers over a few days. And the drifters really followed pretty much the circle around the Big Eddy, which was somehow unfortunate because then they got picked up by fishermen. And the main objective was to actually look at the export pathways from this experiment failed because everything got picked up. So we never got to do it. But um, so one of AMLA's students also uh, is look in, always looking into the um, kind of dispersion properties, the kinematic of the surface flow from the different data set. And uh, so you look at you know, different analysis techniques and it's kind of finding contrasting results depending how you compute the dispersion statistics. And uh, if you look at pair uh, statistics, it looks like the large scale uh, eddy dynamics dominates, as opposed if you look at the you know, structure functions, it looks like some of the scale process are much more important. So we're trying to reconcile those two findings. Um, the, the third thing we're doing with the drifting buoys, and now this is a segue into NASCAR, you know, we people have presented the uh, importance having um, interbasin exchange maintaining the sea surface salinity contrast between the Saudi Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal. So um, the NASCAR project, and this is a uh, piece of art created by Drew Lucas, kind of the concept of NASCAR, was really to 
start looking at uh, what's going on in the Arabian Sea using only autonomous observations and uh, you know, try to relate with the previous observation in the Bay of Bengal. And um, so one of the things we've been doing in the past year was to look at the existing pathways uh, for the fresh water, um, mainly at the surface. But NASCA was really instrumental in helping us build this uh, data sparse region. And this is a combination of Lagrangian analysis and your radar analysis. So it's truly different tracks and putting contrast with reconstruct the radar velocity field. Um, and uh, beyond what uh, Luke and, and Uwe presented, which is the export pathways uh, going around Sri Lanka and south of it, um, it looks like, uh, as Arnold Gordon postulated a few years back, there is certainly another export pathway that kind of goes to the south, kind of measures the Indonesian through flow, and possibly exporting fresh water uh, through the equator and south of the equator into the Arabian Sea. Uh, and the other thing we are finding out, which is kind of in contrast with what all the papers have suggested, nothing seems to be able to go past the Maldives, and, and there is nothing actually flowing to the north east of India. So, you know, all this, if there is an export route here, which there is, and depending on how important it is, looks like something is really going on around the Maldives, and nothing seems to be able to, to go through that block, you know, it's like a big wall. Um, all right, that's another detail of the flow we've seen. Several representations, we know that it's seasonal, monsoon driven, and we also find there are some counter currents going the other way uh, during the monsoon, you know, the opposite phase of the monsoon. Um, okay, now, um, in terms of the plan for, for Mr. Bob moving forward, those are the objective of our drifter work. Um, so it's, um, you know, one of the things we're going to do is, you know, all drifters will have a barometer installed because one of the focuses is the, um, you know, interseasonal oscillation of the monsoon. So uh, surface drifter data, surface, surface sea level pressure data are important. And this, this is an example of why, so for, for two reasons. One, of course, is you want to observe the circulation of the atmosphere with in situ data. The other thing, we know that drift data have a huge effect on numerical weather prediction. And this is an example of a uh, computation of the impact per observation that is computed by NASA on an operational basis. And what this is, is the impact computed as a dry, using the dry energy norm. So you compute the energy of the atmosphere, and every observation contributes a little bit to that uh, metric. And when you do that, you normalize by the number of observations. Drifter very often are the number one in terms of impact. And the second one is, you know, balloons, and then drop zones, and so on and so forth. So we know the impact is very, is very big. So as a zero order, it's important to have those observations in the Bay of Bengal during this experiment. And then, um, you know, for further analysis, to better understand the circulation of the atmosphere, this is like a baseline measurement that we want to have. Um, so this is what we did last year, a couple of air deployments, a couple of wave buoys, and a couple of uh, uh, parameter drifters, and those are drifters deployed by Hamanta during his cruise. And uh, for this year, those are the numbers, a total of 20, I think it's 35, so the heavier is 35, okay, <laughs> not 25. And um, five of those will be minimized one that Lou, uh, Lou mentioned. So they, well, they can also measure surface wind, uh, five of those. So I'm happy to discuss those numbers. We may be able to <coughs> deploy a little bit more so if, we, if there is an opportunity. But um, so I'm going to stop here um, with those conclusions. Uh, and take any questions. Uh, and thank you.